Howdy folks, this is Checkers, and we are here to talk about the GeForce RTX as presented at Gamescom 2018 by NVIDIA, and we are here to talk about it from a real-world theatrical lighting designer's perspective. So I'm not going to talk to you about frames per second or price point or image quality. What I really want to talk about is this new ray tracing technology, how it works with light, and shadow, ambient light, bounce light, and even, even a little bit of reflection. Though in theater, oftentimes we're trying to obscure reflections more than enhance them. But I think there is one interesting part of the technology that they sort of missed. Anyway, I would like to get right on with it. So let's take a look at the first comparison Okay, so what we have here is a light box set up with a red wall, a green wall, a white wall, and a white floor, a single light source, and three various sized objects, three various sized balls, a small green one, a medium sized red one, and a larger white one. Now the problem I have with this setup is that it is not at all what it will look like when they turn RTX on. Not simply the technology being turned on, but the scene will change as well. In this scene, there is a single spotlight at the top and, well, the red ball is absolutely opaque and the white ball is obviously not at all reflective. Now, pay attention that the shadows, though, however, are very harsh and very sharp. The light is very stark and it is all a single color. We are going to, however, turn the RTX on in a moment and we will see exactly if not the same scene, how the scene can change. So we now still have our green ball, our medium sized ball now is absolutely translucent, transparent, and our larger white ball has turned into something of a brushed chrome. And we now have three light sources, which you can clearly see in that chrome ball. And even in the transparent ball, we have a blue light source, a white light source, and a reddish light source. We can tell blue is there because we're getting kind of a lavender on that back wall. We're getting a little more towards orange in the upper right and a little more towards lavender in the upper left as we look at it. Now, what is interesting is that the shadows, even of the transparent ball, exist. They are not quite as sharp as they were, and we can see the light passing through the transparent ball, the glass ball and we can see the light source is clearly reflected in the chrome ball. Now, here's the thing. That's a pretty stark difference. Let's look at that again. RTX off and the world is stark. It's stagnant, it's dead. It's not vibrant, it is very simple. And that's our modern current technology. This is RTX real-time ray tracing, and the world becomes vibrant, it becomes alive, light passes through, light bounces off, light is mixing colors. So if this is the scene with just the technology on, this is a remarkable advance. Our next example here is, once again, another light box with a red wall, a green wall, a white wall in back, a white floor beneath, and a single light source at the top. And we can see we have an NVIDIA Quadro, or I think it's an RTX Quadro, one of their new ones. We have a glass ball in front of that. We have a green ball ahead and slightly off at an angle from the glass ball. We also have a glass, like a presentation box or something that would house a trophy. And behind that, we have our reflective mirrored ball. And RTX is off. We can see a sharper, darker shadow in the corners where the walls meet the roof, the ceiling. And we can also see sharp shadows cast by the card and the mirrored ball. We don't see any shadows cast by the glass box. We do see again another sharper shadow from the green ball. Now let's take a look at RTX on. The scene changes and becomes much, much more realistic. We can see now the shadow of the Quadro card is a little bit softer. We can see that the glass ball is not only casting its own shadow, but we can see the light focusing through it to almost a point just at the bottom. The green ball shadow becomes a little softer. 
we can see now a shadow cast by the glass box and we can see a shadow cast by the reflective ball in the back. We can also see that up at the top where the walls meet the ceiling, the shadows are not nearly as deep. We can also see reflections of the glass box in the quadro card around the fan area and the reflections in the chrome ball have spread a bit, become a bit softer. So RTX off and then RTX on, but with an added bonus as one of their engineers moves the glass ball up and down to prove that it's not a photograph, then adds a front light. And we can see as once again the ball moves that it refracts the front light in a quite convincing manner for I, I, this is graphics. This is real time graphics that they're showing us here. This is really something quite amazing. Now we're moving on to Metro Exodus and I really like this room. We have a single massive light source outside casting shadows through the window panes onto the table and we see that RTX is on. So the table is casting light. It's bouncing light up into the ceiling. It's bouncing light off into the walls, but in a manner that's appropriate because the slant is coming downstage towards us, the upstage area, basically in upright, which is our left hand side and up left were darker. Now they've turned on an ambient light. Now they've only turned on direct light and you can see the massive changes from direct or the ambient light to the RTX lighting. So right now this is just direct light coming in. There is no bounce. There is no spread. There is just light lighting the scene. And this is not what happens with light. Light spreads, light bounces sometimes, whether you want it to or not. And that makes a really big difference. Here they've turned on a single false ambient light. So they're faking the spread and bounce of the light. So you can see up into the rafters, the back wall is much more evenly lit than it should be. And, you know, it works, but it doesn't work accurately, at least as accurately as their RTX system really seems to work. The one thing that I would say that RTX isn't really catching as much as it should is that lacy sort of uh, border at the top of the window. It doesn't seem to be casting any shadow of itself. We can see the pattern of the uh, diagonals in the upper windows, but we don't see that lace pattern when they turn the RTX back on. However, as we look at this ambiently lit scene, we can see, as I said, you know, that back wall was too much lit. Now with the RTX back on, we can see that that back wall has gotten darker and it's darker in the far corner on the left, on our left, than it is on the nearer corner in the right and we can see we can't see up above the rafters anymore because the bounce light just isn't getting up there and the bounce in the rest of the room is it's really working out pretty well the shadows are really lovely i'm guessing that that lacy border on the window there is just not really considered to be there as far as lighting is concerned or we would see it in the uh, far left side of the light as it's striking the floor over the table. But all in all, this is a really beautiful scene and it is well lit. This is something that you would strive for in theater. Now this next scene is from the upcoming Tomb Raider game and it is just amazing. And this is with RTX off. It still looks really, really good. Now you can see that we've got some kids with candles or some sort of light source in their hand they're moving around but we're not seeing any shadows cast by them and we can also see we've got a band in the background we'll focus on them in a little bit hopefully they're going to turn that rtx on in a moment and we will see these pinpoint moving light sources that the children have actually kick the scene into life because of course anything that was casting that kind of light would cast these kinds of shadows and the shadows are pretty accurate in the sense that they do have their deepest, darkest 
in the exact opposite of the light source and then they do tend to fall off on the edges what nvidia was discussing as umbral and the darkest and penumbral in the sections that were falling off softer now personally as a designer in our real world we see a mix of soft shadows and hard shadows but in general unless we're forced to notice them we don't really pay attention to hard shadows so i have always been a fan of softer shadows and in many of the games that i play i will actually turn down shadow quality because i feel it is actually less mm, emotionally accurate let's say so here we are again with rtx off you can see what i mean everyone's casting a hard shadow on the ground we have essentially four light sources here we have the two moving lights the orange and the green then in the back we have the neon lights it took me a while to figure out what was casting this but it's the neon lights we have the blue cactus we have the yellow uh, text and they're what's casting the shadows that are coming directly towards us the cat the shadows that are falling straight in a line from the stage through the dancers to us the moving lights are casting the angled shadows and of course the moving shadows so even with the rtx off they are doing that and you know it's really not too bad for what we see now in games the moving lights have their edges softened so they're not casting super harsh dark light you can see there's a little kind of a dim ring inside the uh, moving lights that's how we can tell that the and aside from the fact that the actual edges of the light aren't harsh now with rtx on we can see that the shadows are starting to blend and even the light cast by the neon above and behind the stage is a bit softer so we're seeing more realistic shadow here the one thing again that in this scene kind of like in the metro scene we have those banners going across the neon lights and we're not really seeing them in any sort of dimming of the lights from the neon we're not seeing them in any sort of shadow and when the orange light crosses the i believe they're balloons we don't really see them cast a shadow so some things it appears do not cast shadows but that's probably a property of the object rather than the light and you know once again here we see the rtx on and off and we can see that difference between these stark shadows and the soft shadows now they're going to turn over to this side and we're going to see neon once more making these very strong sharp cast shadows and that is not actually entirely inaccurate but as i said we perceive things a little bit differently so these softer shadows actually do make me as a designer happier we're getting that cross that mix of colors here and you can see that we've got green casting to one side yellow casting the other but there is that deeper darker shadow cast behind this person it's sort of a shadow sickle and it's really glorious this is really some amazing technology and if they have people who have an eye for light have an eye for putting the light where it can do really interesting things this is going to make for some really beautiful scenes and some really fascinating technology. Okay, finally we have a scene from Battlefield and here we are going to have our RTX on and we're not really focusing so much on the theatrical here as I've never had the chance to light flames shooting across a stage, but more at these reflections. So this is something that they are very proud of, and rightly so. How many times have you looked at a game and seen that? Where's the shadow of the guy? Where's the shadow of what's going on around me? Well, now we're seeing it. That really is impressive. But there is one thing in this scene that I think they didn't really pay as much attention to as they should have. They did mention that, you know, you can see the reflection of the crocodile tank's fire, even in the wood of this rifle, in the metal and that is impressive i'll definitely give them that we can see the fire again in the windows across the street they turn rtx off we can see how it all just disappears and here because they said the rifle is you know basically built in materials we can see the materials the wood reflect as the wood well wood now let's move on with our scene here because what we really want to get to are some airplanes that are 
well, just overhead and having a little bit of trouble. Okay, so our aircraft, and we can see that the fire is reflected in the ground, that's really awesome, but take a look at this red car right here. This red car, car has a glossy paint on it, it's really gorgeous, and with RTX on, we can see the reflection of the airplanes and the sun, but look at the imperfections in the paint. Do you see how it's kind of not smooth? It's not pockmarked or anything, but it's wavy. Now when they turn RTX off, then back on, you can see that waviness disappears. You'll see it again in the roof. Here you can see the imperfections, the waviness in the paint. They turn it off, it goes away, they turn it on, it comes back. It is really something amazing. So we go from this sort of flat, smooth look of the car. You can see a little bit of waviness, but not really very much. Then we turn the RTX on and it comes to life. It comes to life because I think these rays are actually tracing out the imperfections. So we're seeing them come alive in real time. And there you have it. A look at the RTX series of technology and cards from NVIDIA announced at this 2018 Gamescom. Really some truly spectacular, in a quite literal fashion, technology. We are seeing, I think, a new era, at least one that's really exciting for the lighting designers in gaming, I think. And certainly as a lighting designer, or at least a former lighting designer myself, I find this just incredibly exciting. I can't even begin to imagine how much more detail, how much more realistic environments are going to get. And if people are trained to use it correctly, it will make a huge, huge impact in gameplay. And if you think, well, lighting doesn't really do that much, it really, really does. I encourage you, if you're in a room, turn the light off. Tell me what you see. Really not a whole lot. Lighting makes a huge difference. And if you know how to use lighting in the right ways, in the right colors, using shadow and light to sculpt, to shape a scene, to shape a feeling, to shape an emotion, you can do amazing things. So as far as lighting goes and gaming, this is a huge step forward. Alrighty folks, I would like to say thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe informative, even just a little interesting to watch. Because I know I sure did. I would like to invite you to subscribe. Thank you kindly if you are already subscribed. I'd also like to invite you to like and share if you so desire. And hey, if you're feeling really kind of flashy and well lit and up to it, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Most of all though, I would like to ask you to please, please above all, take care.